name is Shell with Farmhouse Living and welcome back to our channel. We're doing a home tour and as you can see, it's a different situation than most. Different situation, but you're gonna love it as much as any other home tour you've ever done, maybe more. Maybe more, and so we are at our friend Tabitha's house. Her, guys, she's an artist, she's a creative, and it's reflected in her RV. And if you have a, honestly, any type of home, I was gonna say a small home. But if you have a tiny room, a tiny space. But if you just need design inspiration, don't tune out because it's an RV. This is incredible. Incredible. So, mm -hmm. here we go. Let's do it. My name is Tabitha Schmidt, and this is our home. We have converted this RV to fit into our style and welcome in. How long have you been doing this? What? So we decided probably about a year ago that we were going to sell everything. We had a big farmhouse on land and we decided to buy an RV, but I wanted it to feel just like a home. I wanted it to have my style. I didn't want to feel like we were missing something. And so finding an RV, floor plan that fit our family's needs and that felt spacious and cozy at the same time was really, really important to me. So we looked and looked and looked and found this particular model. And then we decided we were gonna really go all in on work, carpentry, put all the things that you would typically put in a home to make it feel like a true home. This right here is our open concept kitchen living space. And it actually feels very, very spacious. We have a full-size fridge. We exchanged our RV-size oven for a, almost a full-size oven. We added cabinetry for storage for the pantry. And then we have just plenty of space for dining. We have functional furniture that can fold out for multiple people. We have bar stools. And then the other part of this floor plan was having plenty of sitting space for guests when they would come over. So making sure that it had two couch spots. So there's so much room in this one space just for sitting and dining and commuting together in our kitchen living room. How many square feet so, is the camper, Tabitha? I believe it's about 800 square feet. Wow. Something that we always had to keep in mind when we were working on the RV is weight. So it can really take a toll if your RV is too heavy that can take a toll on uh, just the axle and just the RV as a whole. The flooring, for example, we chose this flooring. Of course, I would go hardwoods all day long. Yeah. But you can't really have true hardwoods in an RV, A, because of the moisture, the shifting of the RV, and because of the weight. Mm. So this was our nice compromise. These are from Cali Bamboo. And I think they turned out really nice. But this this topper, I believe it's a quartz topper, was another compromise. We decided that this was something important to me because I'm such a big cook. I love being in the kitchen. So I wanted something that was natural and sturdy. So this was one of those things that we decided to compromise with and have something heavier. I chose these light fixtures actually made by an artisan on Etsy. Mm -hmm. He hand blows the globes. And, um, and then they have the brass hangings, so they feel like a vintage light. So this, I would not say, is a practical RV item. These glass, hand-blown globes. So when an RV is shaking and moving, the little screws will come loose. So on our first journey, one of them came down and shattered everywhere. Oh. Glass everywhere. And all the couches in such a small space. So we've learned, uh, as we have had more practice, uh, things like we have to take these globes and that globe down when Double. we are in transit. And that's a compromise. I mean, that's not, some people might think that was a waste of time. It was important to me. This is just one of those design elements that I was like, I think I don't mind the extra few minutes to screw yeah. them in when we land. Our hardware is kind of a combination of actual vintage hardware and then I have some pottery barn hardware as well that's, so it's just that blend of old and have, new that's my hardware. is this your hardware yeah. I love this size yeah you know the traditional one is the shorter one but I love the long bar yeah. yep the other thing about this island we were going to totally rebuild it but 
because of the way that the slides come in, it was literally the perfect size mm -hmm. from top to bottom. And we just didn't want to mess with that. Yeah. So my husband added cabinetry on both ends for storage. I keep cookbooks on this side. And then on this side, he added storage for containers that we mm. can store oatmeal and sugar and flowers and such. And so adding storage wherever we could was really important. So the end caps. And here's another example up here at the very top. This was not cabinetry, it's just dead space. Mm. And so my husband created these cabinets up top just for storage. Uh, this structure, I had intended to leave this whole space open, but you have some functional RV, like these are things that have to stay with the RV. Okay. You have a lot of electrical work back there. In our pantry, which is not very clean. That's okay. <laughs> but in our pantry, we also created more height, so we had more space. We typically keep a water filter in here. We built a little special hole right here so that we can keep our water filter off the island because it's so big and takes yeah. up so much space. And then I do little clever things like keeping pans in uh. the oven just to save space. Here's another example of functional storage that didn't seem like very much space. But again, this was cut off right here, and it was just a hollow wall. So my husband went in and created just enough space to have a full spice rack right there. Totally functional, totally beautiful. Adds this nice little alcove yeah. that I can use, and actually even these tiny little spaces where we put quartz is extremely functional. Yeah, I'll use this space to put my teapot when I'm using um, uh, the stove top. So it's just a very, very functional, I feel like very functional in a lot of ways. So is that propane? So we did, we decided this was another decision as a cook, I wanted to make sure that I had a, like a propane gas stove. Mm. And so typically you have a, a electric stove in RVs, yeah. but again, this was really important. This is just something that I prefer so this one really fit perfectly. Of course I wanted the white with the brass knobs, but you have slim pickings when you have such a small space. This yeah. was about as good as it got for function and having um, kind of the look that I wanted. So, but it's a really, it's a really nice space. Eventually we have some tile that will tile out the backsplash. Mm -hmm. But I really, some really, really cool vintage tile. This is just, you know, it's part, it's a lifestyle that you kind of have to get used to. It doesn't look like a typical, this isn't a weekend camping trip. When we mm. go, we're gone for, you know, a couple months. And so we just have to think, you know, keep that balance between, okay, what's practical, what's impractical, what can we keep, what's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I have a couple ridiculous things in here that my husband's let me keep. Yeah. <laughs> but that's kind of our balance. A little bit about this storage space. This used to be a closed cabinet. I wanted this to feel a little bit more open. And then my husband built this. This was also dead space. And it's just extra storage for my art setup. Because typically I'll paint over here in this area because the lighting's so good. Mm. And anyway, so that's kind of this little area. This table pops out and we have four more chairs. So we really have tons of dining space. This area right here is just our TV area. I definitely wanted a frame TV because you don't have a lot of space for artwork in this, on an RV typically. This floor plan actually has more wall space than many of the RVs. So having this was really important. Again, here's another example of a design choice that might not be practical or functional. We don't yet have wiring in there. So it's a little bit more of to give you the feel and illusion that this is a home space. Yeah. Vintage hardware that I got from a vintage shop, definitely worn, definitely has scuffs on it. And I love that because even though this is a new RV and we've done all kinds of things to it, it gives you that warmer feeling of, oh, this is a loved home. Yeah. We kept the fireplace 
a little bit more for function just in the winter when we go to cold places so that we have that typically design wise I would probably cover it up yeah and we may do some little sliding door at some point but for right now it works perfect so what determines where you go so where we go <laughs> it's my whims is where we go <laughs> wherever I decide we go so this is my daughter's room and it's actually a fairly large space so she my husband built two bunk beds so that she can have her cousin spend the night and there's just plenty of space in here for her this is really all she needs you'll also notice in each room we have these really lovely doors with the arched shape again just to give this whole RV some movement yeah and you'll also notice that all the windows and the doorways are rounded mm. so it's kind of my design way of combining that element that we can't change like we mm. can't make square windows and so this just kind of like pulls pulls you into the rounded look yeah um, but with elevating and giving it just a, a little bit more of a upgrade I suppose so then we have just cabinetry work here there's plenty of storage for her clothes a little bookshelf some wall shelves a mirror because she loves to look at herself it's so cute so yeah our sweet little room that is a big room for it I mean really is it's all she needs it now is. if I was a kid Tabitha I'd want to sleep there yeah. yes well being pregnant I don't want to sleep up there <laughs> because I have to literally roll across the bed like a beach twig. Yeah. Um, you should have seen me this morning putting the pillow. Trying up there. to make it. <laughs> like, I can do this. I can do this. But it is really such a fun space. My daughter loves to just play up here. We really, again, picked this model of RV so that if my parents came and stayed in the RV, they could stay in the master. We could sleep up top here. Mm -hmm. My daughter would have a room, and my son would have a pack and play in the in the living room. So again, so much space for so many people. Um, but really light and airy. Sometimes I'll come up here and just take a nap, yeah. just because it's just a really sweet, cozy space. Next, we have a little sliding door bathroom. So again, we have some vintage hardware, and then very small space that we really had to work with. This was kind of a tricky space because it's so small. In fact, I had big dreams to just knock this whole thing out and start all over again. My husband talked me out of it because I wanted, I wanted this going. But now I understand that this, I mean, you really need like a full sink in a bathroom. Yeah. And so really it works. Once we added some paint and some hardware, you know, it, it gave us the look that I wanted a nice brassy towel rack, and then this is actually storage inside this medicine cabinet. And then I threw up a little shower curtain because we have, again, some of our just personal lifestyle choices. We use a water filter on our shower and then also our drinking water. Uh, so it will never have that beautiful brass shower head because we use that water filter. So covering this space is kind of important for me just to kind of give it a cleaner look. Yeah. So Cover the function. <laughs> yeah. This is our master. And this was kind of bold for me. I typically keep things very, very, very neutral. I'm a neutral person. I like functional. I want something to last through all the style changes. But I also love a cozy, dark room. Yeah. In this room, I'm so glad we decided to do what we did. We had originally intended to put wood planking on the ceiling. But then at the end of the day, we ran out of time because we were headed to Florida. So we just decided to paint head to toe the walls, the dresser. And I got this vintage radican. I think that's what you call it. Yeah bed frame off of Craigslist. We actually had to cut it down because it's kind of an awkward space. Um, but this is just the coziest room. Yeah. We love it. And I, I chose these really like swanky velvet curtains, which is so not me, but I just love them now. And they're so warm and it makes it so cozy and dark in here. So at night I draw the curtains and it's just this warm, like you never want to leave. You feel like you're in this like cozy cave. Yeah. And I don't even mind. I would typically design wise 
remove the mirrors um, and we may add some like paneling to make it look like you know like a like actual paneled mirrors uh -huh. but it actually makes the space feel bigger when you have a mirror in a space and this is again a teensy tiny space so this really helps expand and make it feel like it's not like crazy tiny yeah so we'll leave the mirrors to some capacity there. so we that's it that's the house there so she goes. any final tips for people wanting to take on this lifestyle um, a lot of people are kind of scared to tackle an RV like oh I don't really know what to do I don't, I don't know where to start I mean paint goes a long 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 way with RVs removing that cabinetry to extend your ceilings adding the lighter paint or darker if you want that cozy feeling in like a bedroom um, but even just doing those two things can make your RV into such a different space yeah. and not being afraid to make it feel like a home. Of course, not everybody is going to choose some of the compromises that we chose. If you're not living in it full time or if that's just not something that's important to you. So you have to find your own personal balance for what's functional for our family, what's functional for the road, and what fits my style, and how can we meet in the middle. Yeah. So that's my advice. Well, it's amazing. Tell Thank everyone you. where to follow you, where they can follow oh your goodness. journey. <laughs> so right now you can follow me at Fox Hollow Studios. It's actually my artist name. I'm a full-time artist. That's what me and my husband do. We run my small business, which is how we get to do this or why we do this. So you can follow me there and you'll see RV, art, life, and everything in between. Perfect, well thank you. Thank you, girl. I love it.